Many famous athletes are wearing it. A guy that is spending millions every single year to expand its lifespan is wearing it. And I'm wearing it. That is the WHOOP 4.0. This video is part of a bigger experiment. I was wearing a smartwatch, hybrid watch, the WHOOP and an Aura ring all at the same time for 6 months to find out which is the best. And the WHOOP is not just a step counter. It's an intelligent health tracker that helps you understanding your habits and improve on your health and sleep quality. We are the first generation that is capable of tracking all of our health data 24-7 and we can learn a lot from it and extend even our lifespan. This video was not sponsored by WHOOP. All of the opinions are my own and at the end I will tell you if I will keep wearing WHOOP. And I did not only wear it, I was living by it. I was really doing what it suggested to do. And that's it. Simply a fabric wristband. There's no display or buttons or connectors. It is elastic, soft and has a metal buckle at the top. When you open it, the technology inside reveals. You can remove the strap and then all you have in your hand is a tiny piece of plastic. It weighs just 11 gram and it contains all the technology. The whole thing is 10 meter waterproof and because there is an incredible number of wristbands to choose from, it's quite versatile in its appearance. Sporty or elegant, everything is included. There's even underwear and a swimsuit where you can put the boob in. But I do have to admit, I still don't find the whole thing very attractive. It still is kind of a fitness tracker and I think Withings approach with a watch or auras with a ring is somehow more elegant. But you can quickly tell if someone is wearing a whoop and to be honest, I don't even care if you are wearing a Rolex, but if I see you wearing a whoop, I will talk to you about my resting heart rate and my HRE and all the supplements I'm taking. For a fitness tracker to work as accurately as possible, it has to sit firmly on your arm and that's why Whoop has an elastic fabric. It looks more comfortable than I found it on the first two weeks. This imprint of the sensors is something everyone with a Whoop knows only too well. And although fabric is a nice idea at first, the downside is that it gets quickly wet and it stays wet for a long time, almost for one hour after showering. The thing about Whoop is that you are supposed to never take it off. You are charging it while wearing it. Like this, you just click it on and wear it. That's an inductive system, something like wireless charging and the whole process takes about two hours. The battery itself lasts for four to five days. So about four times longer than a smartwatch and only a quarter as long as a Withings hybrid watch. The charger has USB-C and it's even waterproof to a depth of two meters for one hour. It is kind of bulky, but you can wear it in everyday life if it's necessary. My smartwatch, hybrid watch or the Aura Ring, everything was left at home at some point, but the Whoop never was. I was always wearing it, but sometimes I was wearing the battery with it, but it is so firm that I never lost it because of it. But there are two problems with the system. You always have to have this little charger with you if you are out for more than five days and it's quite easy to lose. And second, wireless charging generates heat, power is lost and the battery wears out faster. That's not the most efficient system out there, that's certain. And following my criticism, I don't like that there is no display at all. Just a tiny one that is telling me the time or the strain would have been nice. So I'm still stuck with wearing a regular watch on my other hand and because it looks stupid to wear two things at your wrist, I'm wearing the whoop up at my biceps. It is so comfortable, I often forget that I'm even wearing it and at the security at the airport, that sometimes was a problem. Now I want to talk about the most important thing, the data. Whoop 4.0 has sensors for pulse, skin temperature, blood oxygen and a 3D gyroscope for movement. So far so basic, but the difference to the Apple Watch or the Aura Ring is that the pulse is measured continuously and not spontaneous every few minutes. When you open the app you don't see any steps or minutes of movements or floors you've climbed. All of these values are tracked of course, but, but Whoop's algorithm uses them to calculate two things in the background the recovery and the strain. This value is given from 0 to 99%. It tells you how efficient you are today. The result is made up of everything. The worst score I ever had was 23% during COVID-19. The best was several times 99%. The data is very personal. Everyone has different data, so no matter your height or your weight, you will have data that is just for you 
And because of that, the Whoop needs to get to know you. So you have to wear it for at least 30 days until you unlock all the features. Second, strain. The strain is given between 0 and 21, but the maximum possible load is 20.7. So I have no idea why they came up with that system. From 0 to 100 would have been more logical in my opinion. There is a recommended load based on your recovery and the better recovered you are, the harder you have to push. On the other hand, you can easily overshoot your target if your body is poorly recovered. Then you already have a base load of 4 to 5 in the morning and you should not build more than 8. So sport is not an option. Whoop is collecting all the data, but the most important one is the HRV. That's the heart weight variability. Briefly explained, our heart does not beat perfectly evenly. There are variations and these are measured in milliseconds. And generalized, the higher the HRV, the fitter you are. And Whoop says that the average value from the whole night is not very meaningful and they give more weight to the hours before waking up. And that's why there can be really big fluctuations from day to day, where my aura ring always showed similar results. Because the Whoop app can be a bit overwhelming at first, there has been an update and now there's chat GPT inside of the app and it can even work with your own data. This is a great feature, especially for newcomers, but I only use it spontaneous. Right next to it, there's the health monitor. It provides a quick overview over your vital data, which is highlighted in the color red if something is negative. I wish you could see the current temperature, but apart from that, I think this feature is very useful. One of my absolute favorites is the journal. Whenever you open the app, a short journal appears. It asks you things like, did you consume any dairy products yesterday? Did you take melatonin? Did you eat late? Did you go in a sauna? And much more. After a few weeks, you will see what's good for you and what's a bad habit and how bad it really is. Caffeine, for example, or reading in bed is great for me, but late meals or earplugs are bad. I mean, sure, often you can just guess what is good for you and bad, but sometimes you really don't know or you don't know how bad it really is for you. And seeing that in an exact value is super motivating into enhancing the positive behavior and canceling out all the negative stuff. I would suggest to keep it simple at the start, don't add too many options into the logbook so you are not annoyed if you have to do it every single morning. I think it's a shame that you can't put absolutely everything in there. It has to be pre-made by Whoop and there are some strange quantities. Another highlight is the alarm clock. In the evening, you can see exactly when you need to go to bed for a good night's sleep. If you were active on that day and had a short sleep last night, you need more sleep. And that only makes sense. And because I've been following Whoop's advice for six months, I slept more, more regularly, and therefore almost always felt well rested and awake. With the alarm clock, you can decide whether you want to be woken up at a certain time or if you have reached a certain level of rest. The Whoop even takes into account how long it usually takes for you to fall asleep and vibrates so strongly in the morning that it wakes me up and my girlfriend notices it too. But it's way less than a regular alarm clock. To silence the Whoop, you have to hit it twice. This looks strange, but it usually works. Missing sleep is collected in a deficit account and until you finally catch up. In addition to the duration, there's of course an in-depth information on how restful your sleep was, the consistency, the deep and the REM sleep, resting heart rate and how often you have been awake and your breathing rate. The data of the Whoop 4.0 is not the most accurate in the industry, but because you are wearing it every single day and it get to know you very, very good, it gets very specific at the end. Right now, it is way better than it was at the start of my experiment. And sometimes the Whoop tells me I do have a bad day, but I feel great and then I, I'm not negatively influenced by it. I just keep doing whatever I'm doing and I keep in mind that it's just data and I still have my own body and I can hear inside of me and follow through. But on the other hand, if the data is good, I'm very motivated. It's kind of a gamification. It was only after a few months when I fell in love with the stress monitor. 
It mixes some of the data to recognize when you are stressed and this works amazingly well. When I get sick or when I'm beyond my limits, I can always see it here clearly and first. This was really helpful during COVID-19. I was lying in bed, I was doing nothing and the value was constantly red. Even the days after, when I felt better again, I could still see that my body was struggling. However, if you are simply stressed without being ill, you can do some breathing exercises right here and there. These are based on the Wim Hof method and Dr. Andrew Humerman helped to develop them as well. Normally, I think breathing exercises are kind of lame, but these are nice because they are tracked and you can see how much they really helped. I think it would be even greater if the band vibrates, if it detects that I'm stressed for longer, so I'm reminded to take a break. And I do think that the vibration motor could be used even more. For example, if I'm sitting for more than an hour, it could vibrate to remind me to get up. Of all the fitness trackers I know, Whoop is best suited for workouts. Normal jogging or cycling is automatically recognized, but when I'm in the gym, I have to enter my whole entire training plan and it has to be pre-made. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but on the other hand, it's quite accurate if you get it working. If you don't dial in all of the information, it is not that great in tracking workouts. On a treadmill, it's great to always see when I'm in the heart rate zone too. However, when I'm jogging on the outside, it's stupid to hold the smartphone in hand all the time. So I prefer my Pixel Watch 2 for that. And then there are the negative sides. Whoop does need internet, all the time. If there is no internet, there is no whoop. Not even essential features, not even the basic ones. So that's super sad. I mean, most of the time I do have internet, but the synchronization takes quite a while, so it's not the fastest app out there. The accessories are also far too expensive. 54 euros for a bicep band plus 5 euro shipping is pretty insane because the whole thing is just some fabric with metal. A Xiaomi fitness tracker with a display costs less money. And of course, we don't know whether the accessories will remain compatible with a potential Whoop 5.0. The crazy thing about Whoop is that you can't buy it. It is not a one-time purchase as the Aura Ring for 300 euros. You have to subscribe to it and you will get the Whoop 5.0 if it is released for free. For some people, it could be great that you don't have to spend hundreds of euros in advance, but you can pay it little by little. But on the other hand, it can add up quite a bit. Over a span of five years, it's over 1000 euros. But even so, I think it is worth every single cent of it because it is the only subscription that actually helps my health. So I would cancel Netflix before I cancel Whoop. Why Whoop choose the subscription is of course very clear. For them, it means constant income. So they can work on the app, pay research, consultants and athletes. The concept is that it's not a finished product that you pay for once, but a product that constantly is improving and that needs constant money flow. Because you can always cancel your Whoop at any time, Whoop is under the pressure to create more data and be more useful every single day. A lot of new features were added in my six months with it. A few words about Whoop 5.0. This is due to release in 2024 and the rumor has it that it will be better in some respects. More accurate sensors, longer battery life, smaller design. It's always nice to see those sort of things. Maybe there are even some new sensors or interfaces. I would love to see something with blood sugar. Conclusion. I started this whole experiment with the hope that I would not like Whoop because I did not want another subscription in my life. But now I'm very positive. I do like it very much and I want that all of my friends and family members are wearing a Whoop. I can track my activity, sleep, stress and even habits. And that's very powerful. Once you get used to Whoop, every other fitness tracker seems kind of basic and dumb. There's still room for a lot of improvement, more accurate sensors, more features, maybe blood glucose in the future. But I'm happy to be part of the journey and I'm excited to see what's next to come. That's it for my video. I hope it was helpful. See you soon. Bye.